Hello everyone. Today we will discuss about hemolytic uremic syndrome. Hemolytic uremic syndrome is an important cause of severe acute kidney injury in the childhood. So it is an important cause of severe acute kidney injury in childhood. So to diagnose this hemolytic uremic syndrome we have a triad. The triad includes so the triad it includes micro microangiopathic hemolytic anemia thrombocytopenia and acute kidney injury. So to call it as a microangiopathic hemolytic anemia The patient should have Hb of less than 10 gram per deciliter with hematocrit of less than 30 percentage with cystocytes in the peripheral smear of about more than or equal to 2 percentage. The cystocytes are nothing but the fragmented RBCs that is So these are cystocytes, the fragmented, the fragmented RBCs, these are also called as the helmet cells. These occur because of the mechanically induced damage to the RBCs. So along with these three, you should have either elevated LDH of around 450 international units per liter or there should be a undetectable haptoglobulin. Okay. So there should be an undetectable haptoglobulin. This is micro angiopathic hemolytic anemia next is thrombocytopenia for thrombocytopenia the child should have a platelet count of less than 1 lakh 50,000 to call it as acute kidney injury the child should have serum creatinine it should be there should be an increase in the serum creatinine by 50 percentage from the baseline level so there should be increase in the serum creatinine over 50 percentage from the baseline level these are the criteria for these are the criteria to call it as a uh, hemolytic uremic syndrome okay to confirm this uh, to i mean uh, to uh, confirm this hemolytic uremic syndrome you also need to exclude according to the recommendations by IPNA you have to exclude DIC, TTP and the disease that mimic HUS. So disease that mimic HUS are malaria, dengue and leptospirosis. So these should be excluded. So you have to exclude DIC, TTP, malaria, dengue and leptospirosis. DEIC you have prolonged PT, APTT will be prolonged. You will be having elevated D-dimer. your haptoglobulin level will be normal in DIC while in HUS this haptoglobulin level will be 
undetectable okay this undetectable okay so this is the difference between dac and hus while in ttp it is a very rare disease in childhood it is a very rare disease of childhood when do you suspect ttp in a child is when the child has a persistent it is persistently low platelet count which is about less than 30000 okay this ttp diagnosis is confirmed by demonstrating adam ts13 activity so the diagnosis is confirmed by demonstrating adam ts13 activity of less than 10 percentage okay so this uh, adam ts13 activity cannot be done in all the laboratory so before uh, in, before you are doing some treatment for the patient for hus you take a sample preserve the sample for uh, seeing this adam ts13 activity okay so you will you will be preserving it in a citrate solution at the storage of minus 20 to minus 70 degree celsius you will be storing the sample in minus 20 to minus 70 degree celsius it will be stored for to diagnose the uh, ttp okay next we'll have we'll see the classification of hus so this is a new classification of hus according to ipna okay so in this classification first is shiga toxin induced hus this is the most common form of hus in child children in shiga toxin induced hus it can be due to e coli second it is shigella dysentery a type 1 इनफेक्शन वि Neuraminidase producing Streptococcus pneumoniae. So infection with Neuraminidase producing Streptococcus pneumoniae. Third type is infection associated HUS. HUS it can be triggered by influenza A HIV EBV CMV parvo virus B19 echo virus varicella hepatitis A B and C salmonella typhi bartonella and leptospira okay fourth type is secondary hus the disease that triggers the hus will be coming under secondary hus and even the drugs that are, uh, that can cause or that can trigger hus also comes under the secondary hus so among the secondary hus you have diseases like sle anti anti phospholipid antibody syndrome hematopoietic 
stem cell transplant uh, or it can be solid organ transplant or it can be due to malignancy so the drug induced hivs or the drugs that can trigger hivs i'll write around four drugs here quinine mitomycin clopidogrel sirolimus bevacizumab so these drugs can be associated with hivs or can trigger the hivs fifth type it can be due to defective cobalamin metabolism this defective cobalamin metabolism it is due to heterozygous and homozygous homozygous mutation in mma chc gene it is due to homozygous or compound heterozygous mutation in mma chc gene mma chc gene is uh, methyl melanoic acid urea and homocysteine urea type c gene okay the sixth type is atypical hivs which is difficult to treat atypical hivs this atypical hivs will cover in detail about atypical hivs in next video i just tell it is due to this is also due to a mutation in complement factor h complement factor i complement factor b c3 and cd46 and uh, thrombomodulin so these are due to mutations in these or it can be due to auto antibodies to factor h okay this is about the classification of hivs we will see each thing in detail what is the pathogenesis how we are going to confirm the case okay so first is shiga toxin associated hivs shiga toxin associated hivs you have confirmed case what is the definitive criteria to tell it is a shiga toxin associated hivs so it is hivs plus you should have infection with shiga toxin producing organism that is confirmed by positive stool culture with either of the following this either of the following there should be a detection of virulence gene on fecal extract so detection of virulence gene on the fecal extracts that is stx1 these are toxins stx1 and stx2 or there should be a detection of free fecal shiga toxin it can be by immunoassay method okay third or you can have serum igm antibody to the specific zero group okay this is the confirmed case to tell that the child is this hivs is due to shiga toxin next you have the probable case or you could suspected case
so when you call it as a suspected case is hivs occurring within 2 to 3 weeks of bloody diarrhea so hivs occurring within 2 to 3 weeks of bloody diarrhea so what is the pathogenesis involved in this shiga toxin associated hivs pathogenesis is this is this is the gut it mainly takes place in colonic mucosa this is enterohemorrhagic e coli this produces the shiga toxin these are shiga toxins this affects the enterocytes so this damages this the toxin damage damages this enterocytes so when this uh, enterocytes are being damaged this toxin is released into the circulation so these toxins are released into the circulation in the circulation these toxins bind to neutrophils monocytes platelets and rbcs so these toxins binds to monocytes neutrophils platelets and rbcs in this main factor here is neutrophil this neutrophil this can enhance the ability to transfer the toxins so they have they have the ability neutrophils can enhance the ability to transfer the toxins okay next after in the uh, in the circulation these being transferred mainly to their target site the target site for these toxins are glomerular capillaries and peritubular capillaries in kidney and also in the brain okay so they are transported to the kidney to the glomerular capillary and the peritubular capillaries okay this glomerular these are endothelium the toxins which are being translocated with the help of the rbcs these are rbcs these toxins are translocated with the help of the rbcs into the glomerular capillary once they reach the glomerular capillary these toxins these toxins activate the neutrophils that is leukocytes and the platelets these are platelets so they activate the neutrophils and platelets plus they can also directly damage this endothelial cells so toxins activate the leukocytes and the uh, platelets thus forming platelet and leukocyte aggregation plus they directly damage endothelial cells so this direct damage of this endothelial cells and the for platelet and the leukocyte aggregation everything leads to the formation of what is called as thrombosis once the thrombosis is formed in the micro cap i mean uh, micro vascular vascular uh, structures when the rbcs enter inside this micro vascular structure this leads to the mechanically damaged rbcs this mechanically damaged rbcs what is seen in the peripheral smear as schistocytes that is fragmented rbcs okay this is the pathogenesis in shiga toxin induced are uh, hivs so the treatment for this is 
good hydration you should maintain the fluid balance according to the urinary output for the child when there is a fluid overload which can trigger the already possessed acute kidney injury in the child so the choice of the fluid here is rl or dextrose with saline next antibiotic antibiotic of choice for the shigella that is first choice will be for shigellosis is cipro ciprofloxacin you can also use ceftriaxones azithro and cefixin okay this is about shiga toxin induced hivs next we will go for pneumococcal induced hivs in pneumococcal induced hivs it is the it is it has a high mortality and the child will be very sick in pneumococcal induced hivs so child can be less than 2 years of age child presents with sepsis or pneumonia or it can be with meningitis features the dct will be positive in pneumococcal induced hivs dc that is direct cum's test without any features of uh, dac without the features of dic okay so uh, here also we'll have a confirmed case for this so how will you confirm the child is having a pneumococcal induced hivs hivs with streptococcus pneumoniae the bacteria is isolated by the bacterial culture or blood culture or there will be detection of pneumococcal antigen detection of pneumococcal antigen by pcr or elisa in the appropriate body fluids by pcr or elisa in appropriate body fluids okay so what is the pathogenesis in pneumococcal induced hivs so pneumococcal induced hivs it is mainly because of the neuraminidase that is produced by the streptococcal pneumonia mainly because of the neuraminidase that is produced by streptococcus pneumoniae this neuraminidase produced streptococcus pneumoniae this cleaves the sialic Sorry, sialic acid it cleaves the sialic acid which is present in the membranes of membranes of the endothelial cells rbcs and platelets so neuraminidase producing uh, neuraminidase secreting streptococcus pneumoniae it cleaves the sialic acid that is present on the membranes of endothelial cells platelets and rbcs so once this sialic acid on the membranes of these cells are being cleaved this exposes t antigen t antigen is nothing but thomson fred fred and rich antigen once this antigen gets exposed the body produces the antibodies against this antigen so igm antibodies are being stimulated or produced and react with this t antigen to 
trigger the and it triggers hemolysis okay this leads to anemia in which because antibodies are produced against our own t antigen the dct will be positive in this patient okay the patient with this pneumococcal induced hus will be very sick and the morbidity in this patient is more than 80 percentage and mortality is around 30 percentage in pneumococcal induced hus so this is about pneumococcal induced hus next we will see about the cobalamin deficiency associated hus So, cobalamin deficiency associated with HUS. In this, how will you, how are you going to find it? it? Is because of cobalamin deficiency. So, here you have to look, estimate the total homocysteine level. When the total homocysteine level is more than hundred, even it is more than hundred micromole per liter total homocysteine it is a probable case with vitamin b12 should be norm for confirmation you do a gene study there will be a mutation in already i have told it is mma chc gene okay the treatment option for this cobalamin deficiency associated HUS is parental parental hydroxycobalamin oral betaine and folic acid. This cobalamin associated HUS these do not respond to plasma exchange okay this is about cobalamin deficiency associated hus we will cover about atypical hus in 